Good morning, Jody. Nadine Sheehan. That's right. Did you ever get Nadine Foley's meal? You know, I don't think I actually did. Yes. It's she might have gotten some of mine my. just because of Nadine, but no, I think hers would have all gone to her. <laughs> uh, where does that name come from, Nadine? Well, actually, my dad worked on the Dodge Farm. Oh, uh, my dad worked on the Dodge Farm when um, uh, when he came during the uh, when the uh, car factories went down during the Depression, and uh, he heard the name with uh, someone who was there working. I don't know if it was somebody in the family or if it was somebody who was uh, a co-worker of his. He worked Maybe it was a song even. Uh, well, there is a song, <laughs> Nadine, Honey, Is That You? <laughs> Which the fellows on, uh, at Borges High School used to sing to me every once in a while in the halls. <laughs> So, so yeah. you uh, taught at Borges High School I in did. Detroit? Mm -hmm. What yes. was it in Detroit? Was it, it was, it, well, Southfield. officially Redford, Redford. but uh, mm -hmm. Detroit. Were there yeah. any other Dominican high schools that you graced with uh, your presence? Oh, well, I was at Borges uh, for a number of years, both teaching and um, administration, then went to Rosary for a year, the year that uh, we closed it. Oh, my. Yes. Um, I was asked to go just so that we ha would have a sister who was uh, principal at that time. Did Rosary cl close because lack of enrollment? Lack of enrollment and because the whole area had changed into a more manufacturer manufacturing kind of um, area. Um, so, and then there were other people schools. People had moved that, away. Probably. That's right, and moved away. Mm -hmm. yes. That building's being used now, though. Absolutely. Isn't? In fact, that was one of the nicest things about <clears throat> closing it was that Wayne Community College took it over. They bought it from us, wow. and they were thrilled to death to have a, a, a building that they could call their own because before that, they were mostly just in parts of buildings downtown and around. So this was their first real campus. Oh my. Yeah. Um, and weren't the bu our, our high school buildings built well? They were built very well. They were very pleased with everything. I forget everything. the a, a construction company. I think no it had idea. something to do with the um, Barry. Uh, could be. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. I don't... Uh, do, you, I, do you remember who the last Superior was a, a principal at Rosary. I was. Yes. And then before, before that was a gentleman. Oh. And I've forgotten his name. Oh, okay. Um, and he stayed on, but he was, um, it said a lot as to type, the type of man he was because he could have caused a lot of uh, problems for me. And some of the men on the staff uh, were not real happy that he was uh, asked to step down. Mm -hmm. So, um, but he did not. He was very cooperative. Did uh, he was a musician also, and and just helped whatever he could. So I was very impressed with his uh, ability uh, to do that. Yeah. Then I went to Dominican, and I was at Dominican for three years. So. And were you administrator there? I was um, treasurer, we called it at that time, mm -hmm. which meant that I was, um, I took care of not only the money, but Mary Saney did a whole lot of that with me. <laughs> she had been there, and so she knew things, so she was a great help. And um, and you're working with her today. Uh, yeah, I am, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and then also the facility, so taking care of whatever needed to be done in the Who facility. Was, was uh, Barb Rodriguez principal at that time? She was. She came in the second year I was there because, um, oh, I forgot his name. We had a, a gentleman mm -hmm. who, was, uh, principal. who was principal, and his son passed away, so he uh, decided he had to step down a year early. And then, uh, so uh, Barb Rodriguez came, and she was a wonderful principal, so. Well, Nadine, <coughs> when I first came to know you, you were uh, 
administering as a nurse practitioner. Correct. So how do you get from administrating <laughs> to, <laughs> to uh, nurse practitioner? Tell well, me about that road. <laughs> okay. Um, when I was at, at, at uh, Dominican, they did a search for principal the last year that I was there um, because they had intended to do that. So um, I thought maybe I might like to put my name in for that. And Barb also had put her name in Barbara for Barb Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there were others or not, but um, uh, I, as I have told several people, it got close to December when we were supposed to say, give our final papers mm -hmm. or say our final thing. And I realized mm -hmm. that I was um, hoping that Barb would get the job, which <laughs> sort of said to me, maybe that's not what I wanted to, uh, because uh, the teaching and education, what I liked better was the contact with the students. Mm -hmm. But I also had had in my mind for a long time um, becoming a nurse. Well, so when did that pop into your head? Well, when I was a senior in high school. Oh, my <laughs> but then when we, um, when I entered, I knew that we were going to be trained as teachers. But I love teaching. And of course, teaching is a great um, background for nursing because we do a lot of teaching, as when, anybody when, who's around knows. <laughs> when, when was your uh, first uh, stint at uh, "Quote unquote nursing when you entered." Oh, I well, I think my mother must have told uh, Mother Gerald that I wanted to be a nurse, probably uh, right after I entered or within that first year, which I didn't find out until quite a while later, which I was glad for, um, because when I was a novice, I was assigned to um, our infirmary, and so I was able to help over there. Mostly what we did was help with uh, preparing the meals and then delivering the meals. So it wasn't exactly a nursing um, job, right. but it was in, in, the, in the infirmary. Yeah. <laughs> so I really enjoyed that. The very yeah. room that we are sitting in now. <laughs> That's right. That's right. This was one of the sisters' rooms. If it could speak. <laughs> That's right. That would be fun. Yeah. So you finally, after how many years, I, I was in education for 22, and then went into nursing, did it at Henry Ford in uh, Detroit, because I already had had my master's in biology. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to have to do another master's. So the community, uh, all the blessings that we get from this community, mm -hmm. the community allowed me to um, uh, do the, <coughs> do, um, uh, the two-year program at Henry Ford. So I did that, and that now is a, a program that's related to Wayne State also. So mm -hmm. anyone who goes through that program now usually comes out with a bachelor in nursing. Where did you first minister with, with a, your uh, expertise? As, as a, a nurse. As a nurse. Yeah. Um, Santa Cruz, uh, California, at our hospital out there. And it was wonderful, of course, run by our sisters. It was a very good hospital, and I really enjoyed that. Was so Sister Ann Harrington there? She was. Time? Sister Ann Harrington was there. Um, uh, Joe Sullivan was the, Josephine Sullivan, yes, was the um, president. Um, Jean Burns was there. Ronnie, um, uh, Veronica Kelly was there. Uh, Sis Bay was there. Mm -hmm. I lived at uh, Holy Cross Convent, so got to know a lot of our sisters there mm -hmm. also for the two years I that I was there. I don't feel the least bit uh, sorry for you being in California, <laughs> in Santa Cruz. <laughs> that's right. Isn't, it was wonderful. Isn't that the surfing capital of the uh, That's what the I understand, <laughs> yes. And just the coast there is different than the coast on the East Coast. East Coast, and so um, uh, it was beautiful. I worked uh, for about three months the day shift. In fact, I worked in an orthopedic um, 
award mm -hmm. to begin with as uh, just an aid because I was waiting for my license from Michigan to come. And then I worked on a, a floor that had a little bit of everything, uh, including uh, a little man who used to crawl out of his bed and try to go next door. <laughs> um, so the night shift was, was good because we were able to do some things that you didn't do on the day shift. One was learn how to um, take blood or put in IVs and mm -hmm. stuff. So I got a very good training there. When did the bug bite you to become a nurse practitioner? Well, when I was studying nursing, I had never heard of nurse practitioners before. And when I was studying nursing, I found out about the extended or broader um, jobs, um, mm -hmm. work that nurses could do. And so my thought was to become a nurse practitioner and then be able to go to areas where, uh, primarily rural areas or other areas where they were poor. Yeah. And not service. as many doctors too. Right. Because you right. could, as a nurse practitioner, what, what can you do differently than a nurse? I, as a nurse practitioner, I can examine someone, I can um, diagnose, hopefully, what's wrong or be able to do things to try and figure out what's wrong. If they needed medications in most states now, I'm able to uh, write a prescription and have it filled. So then where, was your, where did the ministry lead you? I, uh, I went to Georgia. I did the nurse practitioner program in Georgia Southern University. And uh, I went from there to uh, Kentucky. My first um, placement was in a clinic, a rural clinic in Columbia, Kentucky. It, the um, doctor that uh, hired me said that uh, this was because I told him I wanted a, a rural area and poor. And he said, this is the last of the Allegheny, no, the Appalachian Mountains. So at that, the last stop. The last, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so it was very nice. I learned a lot from the doctors that I worked with in that clinic, especially the whole emphasis on education because the doctor we worked with um, had us write articles for newspapers or do booklets, wh which were educational booklets mm -hmm. for people to help them mm -hmm. with their own health. Had you ever experienced poverty around you like that? No, um, I grew up, we grew up kind of poor, so mm -hmm. we did, and also out in the country. Um, but um, that, was, that was much poorer uh, area. Mm -hmm. And uh, the place where we were, the, do the, uh, cl the clinic or doctor's office that I was in, um, they would um, work with the people as far as payment. In fact, one, um, the doctor allowed uh, people to do barter. Oh so uh, he would, someone would come in with three chickens or a couple of turkeys <laughs> or one patient I had was a potter and so she would bring um, I have a nice base that she uh, exchanged for you, her care. Do you still have it with I you? do, I do. Well, that's a treasure. It is, yes. yeah. Um, and then we had people, you know, who were way back in the hollers that um, had uh, difficulty coming in, mm -hmm. but, but eventually got there. Mm -hmm. Also, we had Amish who were in the area who would come um, uh, to the clinic. Um, they didn't, uh, uh, they would get a ride with somebody, but they used horse and buggy there, so. Did you ever go to the homes yourself? I did. Mm -hmm. um, the, the first clinic and the second one, when I was, I was in Olive Hill, Kentucky then. And uh, sometimes I would go out to, to visit them in their home which is always a trip because uh, a lot of things weren't marked as far as roads and stuff. <laughs> so you'd get the direction of um, take this road and then at the big red barn turn left and then 
you know, so, but I found my way almost always, always wasn't quite sure, but, but uh, we would visit people uh, in their homes. So and that was a really nice thing to do, but it also showed you of the poverty. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they're ever on your mind, I would imagine. Well, it seems to have made a yes. profound oh, yes. Yes, uh, it impact did. on you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and now you're full, s well, you, you did serve at Maria. I did. Yes. Yeah. Um, you followed Sharon Spanbauer. Well, I, I came while she her. was still here, mm -hmm. yes, which was wonderful because Sharon was a great mentor mm -hmm. for me um, because I had been treating mm -hmm. patients. Uh, in Kentucky, it was all ages. And then when I did the clinic in, in uh, the Detroit area, Mount Clemens area, we only did, um, we accepted patients up to uh, 65. Because mm -hmm. then when they had insurance, because we only took people that didn't have insurance. Mm -hmm. And so, when, because most elderly people then get Medicare. We did take a, take some who opted out of that part of the insurance. And so they didn't have was uh, it a free clinic? It was. It was a free clinic. Oh it was started by St. Joseph Mercy um, that is now part of the Henry Ford system. Uh, free clinic the, um, that the, the um, hospital uh, decided to start. So we served anybody in the area uh, that didn't have insurance mm -hmm. and whose income was less than a certain thing. I would say that was probably where I met a lot more of the poor. And especially during that time when the economy went down, like uh, 08 and 09, because we began to get a lot of patients who were, um, uh, who had lost their jobs in the uh, manufacturing and different places lost not only their job, but also their insurance. Oh, my. So many of them were struggling with mm -hmm. keeping their homes different, th you know, being able to put food on the table, being able to do, uh, get their medicines. So uh, to me, it was one of the most rewarding of the um, places Thanks that I've been it. because you knew that you took some pressure off them. We could find ways to get them their medicine, we could take care of the medical. So at least that was one thing that they didn't have to worry about. Is that where you mentored one of our Iraqi sisters? Yes. Sister Mary Ann Cooney. Yes, Mary yes. Ann King. God bless you, thank you for that. Oh, it and, was, it was and, nice and getting to know And thank you also, uh, Nadine, for the, for the ministry you are doing today as uh -huh. vicarious. That's a huge word, isn't it? It is. <laughs> You when probably they first, don't use it too much. I well. don't. <laughs> Vicarious of the Holy Rosary. Vicarious. Vicarious. It's called no. the Adrian. It's, yeah, it's not part of Holy Rosary. It's, and uh, yeah. explain exactly what that means. Well, <laughs> um, uh, when sisters get to the point, either physically or cognitively, that it's difficult for them to um, take part in our government structure. Um, in, in many different ways. Um, it was decided several, uh, a couple of years ago. It was on, when Sister Jo Gozier was here. Right, yes. Jo Gozier, it, Jo mm -hmm. Gozier and uh, Maria Gritty. Mm -hmm. So they decided that what they would do would be dispense those sisters from the government structure. So uh, they uh, put it into a, another group, which is called the Vicariate. So that those are the sisters that I uh, relate to. And, uh, a round number of the number of sisters in the vicariat. Right now we have 50, but we're probably going to, that's probably going to go up mm -hmm. <clears throat> in the next little while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those are the sisters that live primarily on? Well, they're on all floors all right, right now, mm -hmm. um, because some of the sisters that physically are uh, unable to even talk or uh, are on some of the floors that are <clears throat> For instance, um, three south and three and two south. Well, I think of Sister need... Adelaide. Yes. Yes. Sister That's Adelaide. One of the one oldest of sisters. She in is. Yeah. Our congregation. God bless. Yeah, her. I believe she is. Mm -hmm. Not quite 
oldest mm -hmm. uh, because we do have a hundred year old one, yes. <laughs> Mr. Charles Christine, <laughs> no, who is not in, in the vicariate. <laughs> she's pumping around. <laughs> she is. Um, yeah. uh, but then primarily we did uh, designate two of the floors as um, a place because we could do more activities with the sisters there. That's uh, the garden level in, in first floor. And so uh, that's one of the aims is to try and, and keep them as active as possible and stimulated as possible. Mm -hmm. So the resident services do a great job with that. I really appreciate oh, what I they do. I don't know what we would do without them. No, do you? no. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And um, is, it, is it difficult for you uh, to suggest to the sister that she might do well on the first floor or garden level, or do you even need to say that? Well, um, when it gets to the point where it seems like wherever they are, depending on uh, how active they are, because there's some that are very active, um, that um, they might do because of more activity and more mm -hmm. stimulation. But it depends on on them and what their abilities are, mm -hmm. what their uh, cognition is at that point. Um, There's a right moment in time, correct? Absolutely, yeah. there is. And, yeah. and we also try to do it so that they have some control over that and so that they do agree. Um, it's difficult. It's a sacred moment, though, it isn't is. it? it? Yes, is. yes. It is. And do are there volunteer sisters that pray with the, the sisters? That is uh, right. Uh, when I uh, took this position last July, I walked into a very well set up thing. Maria uh, Goretti was wonderful at doing the kind of things that could be done with the sisters and for the sisters so that they could be as much a part of the community com and activities of the community. So she set up a whole system of um, uh, inviting sisters to be uh, prayer leaders for both garden and first like floor. sisters living on campus. The sisters mm -hmm. who are living mm -hmm. here on campus. So there is someone for each day on Sunday, someone for each day of the week. Um, uh, yeah, there's another, each day has a different sister mm -hmm. for each floor. Well, God bless them. Oh, oh it, it is a wonderful thing. Yes. And then she set up cards, mm -hmm. uh, large enough print and everything, for the different seasons. So right now, we are into Lent. And she had done a whole set for Lent. Advent. Advent. Advent yeah. Oh, yes, we're in Advent. <laughs> we're in, yeah. we, we won't rush the, the, no. the, the seed. We have, to, we have Christmas right. first. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I may be asking uh -huh. for more uh, volunteers yes. for that group because uh, <clears throat> there are some who are at a point where they have to uh, retire from there. But and, and I have a group of who are uh, willing to fill in on days when somebody has to be gone. So oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Well, thank you so much for oh. for uh, mentoring and loving the, uh, the sisters. Oh. You're the, a constant in their life. And the other beautiful thing, you bring your gifts of a nurse practi practitioner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know when <clears throat> when it's serious and not. That's not, right. Not I don't serious. do any medical care. No. But I do. Um, I can spot things or I, I ask questions mm -hmm. and I make sure that they're getting what they need. Yeah. So. Hey, Dean, when you look back over your yeah. life, um, who have you found to be one of the most fascinating or interesting persons that uh, their memory still stays with you? <laughs> um, well, a couple, like Sister Marie Urban, was my uh, superior and um, while well, I was still in education. And she was one that was really, um, just her whole demeanor, her whole love of us was wonderful. A solid and, citizen, would oh, you say? Oh, absolutely. 
and, and uh, there are many more. Um, someday you should really sit down and, and think yeah. about that. Yeah. But also ones who have Sis uh, um, Bay is another one because she is honest. Um, I, that is one of the things. I lived with her out in California and um, she has such a gentle way of, oh of being honest with you and, and uh, I mean all her other qualities too. Yeah. Uh, she has been a treasure uh, in my life. Mm -hmm. that, uh, and she's know, what, 96 or 97, something, something like that? And, still, and going strong. And going strong. I <laughs> know she's right. a beautiful soul. Yeah, yeah. And you're very lucky. And you just lost a dear, dear, oh, dear yes. friend. Not only a family friend, but yeah, Jude Van Balen. Mm -hmm. Yes, which had was, you lived with her? Yes, we had lived together about mm -hmm. 13 years. So I think all together. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, that was. It was such a surprise, and so quick. In fact, last uh, Sunday's gospel reminded me of that whole process again because you know in the morning when she was doing her exercise and shopping she had no idea that she would be gone from us uh, that night mm -hmm. which uh, in all aspects <coughs> she was uh, she was um, um. Mm -hmm. I know that I've heard that you're the oldest in your family, I is am. that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are five of us. I'm the oldest. I have three sisters, uh, Lorene, Sharon, and Jackie. And then uh, a, a brother, Carl, who is uh, uh, out west. The three of the four of us live closer, um, but he's out in in uh, Montana. I presume you're from the east side of Detroit. Well, from Rochester, Michigan, oh. which is kind of, I always think of it as a northern mm, suburb. Suburb, I suburb. think. Suburb. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you mention a brother, Carl, um, did he take his name from your religious name, Carl no. Edward? <laughs> no. no. Uh, Carl it was his name when he was born, and um, uh, Edward is my dad's name. Uh, Carl actually was the name of the doctor that took care of my mother. <laughs> my dad always called him Junior. <laughs> Didn't call him Carl. He might have uh, later on, but um, yeah. I had mean? I had wanted Irene and Edward or some combination, but that was taken by other sisters who were already in the community. Yeah. Um, were your Were your mother and father okay about you entering? They were. I was the first religious in our in our family, mm -hmm. um, so uh, they were. It was. Um, uh, uh, they were. They were very. Uh, you know what? Although I had been saying since I was a little kid that I wanted to be a nun, so it wasn't a surprise <laughs> uh, for them when I decided to do it for sure. Um, and we had had our sisters at uh, for catechism because we only had a, I went to public school mm -hmm. through high school. So uh, our sisters were the only ones I knew. So that was where I decided I would go. So you just wrote a letter and, or did you go to visit one of the sisters there well, in Rochester? Um, the last year I was there, I mean, the, when I was a senior, the school was built. So, Sister, um, wasn't Ed laid. That's okay. We can skip that part. Okay. <laughs> well, the Sister was superior at, uh -huh. the, uh, at the convent, mm -hmm. uh, helped me get ready and told me what to, what to do because I had gone to talk to her after talking, yeah, so. Well, Nadine, thank you. And I, oh, you're I, welcome. I just realized you've come full circle because when you entered, you, you were uh, assigned <laughs> That's right. St. Clemens, which yeah. is now Ron Colley. That's right. And your, your office is in one Back. of the rooms. That's right. <laughs> I am. That yes. is true. <laughs> yes. And just enough room for a desk and a chair. <laughs> but yeah. I loved every minute of yes. it. Yes. And you, you minister with... 
uh, the other the, side, your team. Oh yes, the uh, the Holy Rosary team. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe, uh, no, Joanne Peters and uh, uh, Pat Dalka. Mm -hmm. So we do, even though we're separate, yes. we do function as a team to mm -hmm. help each other and to um, talk about the sisters because mm -hmm. it's most from the Holy Rosary chapter that sisters are moved into the mm -hmm. precariat. So. And you, you most likely meet with the administrator at times, do you? We do. Oh, yeah. Cheryl? We do. Mm -hmm. We meet with them, with the nursing. In fact, every two weeks mm -hmm. we meet with them to go over if there are problems with any of the sisters mm -hmm. in, in either of our mm -hmm. uh, sections. Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to say to the, the next candidate that might enter our congregation? Oh. Well, Some words of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is a wonderful life. Um, we as a community give each other so many advantages. Uh, I probably never would have been able to see the parts of the country or have being, be able to change ministries the way we do so that we can um, minister in a way that seems to be um, with our gifts. Um, also, the the women that are part of the community are so supportive and so loving that, uh, as I say, it's been a wonderful life. And you have a precious position now of witnessing that every yeah. day, every every minute of every day. Yeah. So God bless you. Thank you. For your service and your love. Amen. Amen.